In the Pacific, communities are adopting a wave of inclusive, sustainable growth and resilience by scaling up their adaptation efforts to climate change. Empowering these communities through a people-centered approach ensures that climate adaptation actions are effective and sustainable. By putting the needs of people first, involving people in decision-making, building local capacity, and promoting gender equality, we can help to build resilient communities that are better able to withstand the impacts of climate change. In this video, we will look at how this community-driven approach is helping Pacific Island communities scale up adaptation to climate change in various ways. A people-centered approach to development means putting the needs of people and their environment first. It is based on four pillars, human rights, gender and social inclusion, Pacific culture, and environmental sustainability. In 2019, the European Union-funded Global Climate Change Alliance Plus Scaling Up Pacific Adaptation, GCCA Plus Super Project, collaborated with 10 Pacific Island countries to develop a set of criteria to select scaled-up adaptation interventions to address climate change. One of the criteria ensures that scaled-up interventions address the socio-economic needs of the most vulnerable groups, using a people-centered approach that prioritizes the needs of communities. This approach is reflected in a checklist called PLANET, which incorporates six principles – participation, linked to rights, accountability, non-discrimination, empowerment, and transforming social norms. The participation principle reflects facilitating, to the maximum extent possible, the involvement of the affected people and communities in the selection, design and implementation of the adaptation activity. The source or drainage scheme in Madhuwata Province, northern Fiji, is extremely vulnerable to flooding during heavy rainfall and seawater inundation. The super project applied a people-centered approach to the design and implementation of an integrated watershed management plan for the area. This involved actively engaging members of the community and other stakeholders in discussions and decision-making around how best to manage the source or catchment and drainage areas. The project held separate consultations with the community to identify the best practices for managing the watershed that has been impacted by frequent flooding events intensified by climate change. The best practices are prioritized in the Watershed Management Plan and require action from national and local government, non-government organizations, and communities. These consultations led to one specific measure that the community were keen to start implementing themselves, namely the planting of vetiva grass to help control the erosion of the Nasuva Riverbank. Ensuring communities actively participate in all components of a project helps create ownership and positive adaptation action. The link to rights principle requires that climate change adaptation measures adhere to human rights standards and commitments under international frameworks. In 2010, the human right to safe drinking water was recognized as binding international law. This entitles everyone to have access to sufficient, safe, acceptable, physically accessible and affordable water for personal and domestic uses. Nauru, a small Pacific island near the equator in the Western Pacific Ocean, experiences variable rainfall, which often lead to extended droughts. The island has limited groundwater and has no rivers or streams, and residents are heavily dependent on expensive desalinate water. The super project worked with partners and the government of Nauru using census data and household assessments to select the most vulnerable households. The number of elderly residents and those with disabilities, as well as the existence or absence of household water storage tanks, were among the selection criteria. Subsequently, 98 of the most vulnerable households were supplied with water tanks to store desalinated water and provide safe access to drinking water. The accountability principle requires that information on the climate change adaptation interventions and the money being spent is made available to affected communities. 
In the Federated States of Micronesia, the Super Project worked closely with communities in the outer islands of Chuk State, Polawat, Pulusuk and Pulap to scale up rainwater harvesting measures. The project allowed for continual engagement with local communities in the decision-making process through consultations and implementation. Memoranda of understanding were signed with each community, clearly identifying the roles of government and the community, the ownership of the land and the new water systems. During project implementation, the communities requested temporary installation of the community rainwater harvesting measures to address water shortages during the 2022 typhoon system, and this request was accommodated. During the full and final installation of the measures, the communities requested some changes in the selected sites for the community tanks, and again, this request was addressed. Applying the accountability principle facilitates communication and flexibility in project delivery and addressing the needs of the communities. The non-discrimination principle benefits all community equitably and allows for addressing the differences between individuals and communities. In the Republic of the Marshall Islands, the Super Project worked with communities in Majuro and Jaluat Atolls to scale up a community health program combined with atoll agricultural activities, such as raised beds for home gardens, to help the households and communities build their resilience to climate change. One of the activities in Majuro was to provide nutritional training to the parents of children with special needs. This helps parents directly address the nutritional needs of their children. The non-discrimination principle helped the project specifically address the individual needs of vulnerable groups such as these. The empowerment principle equips specific people in all their diversities with the knowledge and expertise to adapt to climate change. As part of the broader scope of the super project in Cook Islands, youth were engaged in environmental conservation initiatives. These initiatives aim to enhance adaptive management in the marine sector and deepen their knowledge of climate-related challenges and the effects on the marine environment in the Cook Islands. The super project collaborated with Correro Teoru Keio to collect and analyze traditional knowledge in selected Southern Group Islands. After an introductory workshop and data collection, school students were engaged in marine conservation on Mauke Island. Two local youth were trained in freediving techniques to reduce the infestation of taramea, also known as crown of thorn starfish, to protect the coral reef ecosystem. A total of 119 taramea were collected, sparking valuable discussions among stakeholders and students. Empowering all Pacific people with the knowledge and skills to adapt to climate change is key to sustainability. The transforming social norms principle relates to changing behavior and lifestyle changes and transforming barriers to sustainable development. Returning to the example of the Republic of the Marshall Islands, where climate change is affecting health and well-being and intensifying diseases due to unsafe water and disrupted food patterns, the Super Project has taken a proactive and equitable approach to support both men and women and children strive towards more sustainable nutrition and active healthy lifestyles. Women in Jaluit and Majuro were involved in creating home gardens and they received training in cooking and gardening. Moreover, health workers were trained and over 2,000 people, of whom 75% were women, underwent health checks. Specially designed exercise activities were conducted separately for men and women. Recognizing that behavioral and lifestyle changes may require generations to take effect, the Super Project has achieved significant progress in its three years of operation and can hopefully leverage from other ongoing initiatives to continue such that behavioral changes take effect in the long term. Integrating a people-centered approach is crucial in climate change adaptation in the Pacific region. By prioritizing the needs of communities and involving them in all decision-making processes, we can ensure sustainable and resilient outcomes. The Super Project exemplifies this approach by engaging local communities, promoting gender equity, promoting human rights, and addressing the socio-economic needs of vulnerable groups. By embracing a people-centered approach, 
the Pacific region is harnessing its potential for inclusive and sustainable growth.